Isang uh, pinagpalang umaga po sa ating lahat. So, mamaya po ay uh, we're going to celebrate uh, the Lord's Table. So, ihanda po ninyo ang inyong sarili because uh, this is a very important uh, celebration sa isang uh, Kristiyano. Yun pong uh, Communion. Communion Sunday is a very important uh, affair for us Christians. So, I suppose, eh, nakahanda na po lahat, ano? At uh, maya-maya po ay uh, we're going to celebrate the Lord's Table. Pero bago po dyan, ay uh, meron po akong hinanda para sa atin ngayong umaga na ating pagbubulay-bulayan mula sa banal na kasulatan ang titulo po ng aking uh, uh, ini-discuss this morning is that under grace, you are not praying on your own merit. Tandaan po ninyan. Now, again, ulitin ko lang, na pag sinabing under grace, we're practically saying that we are under the new covenant of grace. Pag sinabing under law, we're practically saying that comparing to the old covenant of the law that was given to the Jews. Remember what we have studied last Sunday? The old covenant, the covenant of the law, which was given to the Jews, no? The Jews. Yung pag sinabing under grace, under the new covenant of grace, pag sinabing under law, under the old covenant of the law that was given to the Jews. Okay? So, ang tema natin ngayong umaga, under grace, you are not praying on your own merit. Okay, tignan natin ang mga uh, punto na ating tatalakay ngayong umaga. Now, remember this in, in the book of Romans chapter 4, uh, 14, we discussed this uh, last Sunday. For sin shall not have dominion over you, for you are not under law, but under grace. Can you see that? Kasi sabi ko lang kanina, that uh, ang kasalanan, sin, will no longer have power over you. Sin will no longer dominate you. Sin will no longer have a hold on you because you are not under law but under grace. No? So, kaya nga, ang dinugtong dito ni San Pablo ay natatandaan ninyo merong mga umaangal sa kanya. Eh. Merong mga, alam yung kritik ba? Mga kritiko niya, parang sinasabi na isinulat niya dito sa 6.15, Eh, ganun pala. Di, tena. Pwede na tayo magkasala kasi we're no longer under law but under grace. So, let's sin. And then, ang sagot, simple lang ang sagot ng Apostle Paul, certainly not. Or, sa ibang salin, ang sabi niya, by no means. No? Kasi dito, maliwanag, maliwanag naman ang pagkaunawa nito eh. Pagka under grace ka, sin will no longer affect you because it has already been paid. Di ba? Bayad na Bayad na ng Panginoong Heso Kristo doon sa krus ng Kalbaryo yung mga kasalanan mo na ilipat sa Kanya. Kaya sabi dito, sa bagong tipan na ginawa ng Panginoong Diyos na mediated by our Lord Jesus Christ, that sin will no longer have dominion over you. Why? Simply because all your sins have already been paid in full by our Lord Jesus Christ on the cross. No? Kaya nga po, sa bagong covenant, iba-iba mga mga pinapagawa sa atin. No? Kailangan tayong maging matatag doon sa pananampalataya sapagkat ang lahat ay tinapos na ng ating Panginoong Heso Kristo sa krus ng Kalbaryo upang tayo maging malaya sa uh, law, so to speak. Okay. Now, itong unang punto natin ano, sa, sa panalangin, ating suriin ang panalangin ng uh, mananampalataya ayon sa bagong tipan. O kung susuriin mo, kung alam mo na na ikay nasa bagong tipan na. Una, prayer has, be, uh, has changed under the new covenant because in Christ we are complete. Do you remember this verse that we have discussed? 
several Sundays ago that uh, in Christ we are complete. Notice in Colossians 2, 10, 9 and 10, it says, For in Him, in Christ, dwells all the fullness of the Godhead bodily. And then, tingnan yung sinunod, And you are complete in Christ. Pag sinabi bang complete, may kulang pa. Di ba? May kulang pa ba pag sinabing in Christ, you're complete? See? Payad na lahat ang kasalanan mo eh. So, kumpleto ka. Hindi naman sasabihin ng Biblia yan. In Christ, na you're complete kung may kulang pa. No? So, uh, isa yan sa mga dahilan kung bakit nagbago ang pananaw ng panalangin sa New Covenant. You see, under the New Covenant grace, we are made righteous. Ito yung dahilan. Importante ito. Sabi sa Romans chapter 5:19, for just as through the disobedience of one man, which is uh, Adam, no, the disobedience of Adam, many were made sinners. So also through the obedience of one man, Jesus Christ, many will be made righteous. Today we who are in Christ Jesus. We are made righteous. Importante po ito na malaman mo na ikay righteous. Bakit? Sa pagkatang panalangin, magbabago na. Nagbago. When you know you are righteous. How? Papano? You see, bear in mind that we are the righteousness of God in Christ. For He made Him who had no sin to be sin for us, that we might become the righteousness of God, meaning it was God Himself who proclaimed you and I righteous when we believed in our Lord Jesus Christ. So, in other words, here is a very uh, good and uh, nice Proverbs. In Proverbs 15, 29, it says, The Lord is far from the wicked, but He hears the prayer of the righteous. In other words, you know, sa bagong tipan, sa bag, the new covenant of grace, God made you righteous. And therefore, if God made you righteous, it is without a doubt He hears your prayer. Are you with me? No? God hears your prayer. Unlike the old covenant, marami pang mga uh, pinagagawa in order for you, in the old covenant, in order for, for God to hear your prayer, you must first Obey all His commands, then He blesses you. If you disobey His commands, sabi ng Biblia, Deuteronomy 28, He will curse you. Are you with me? See, that is one of the reasons why may pagbabago sa panalangin ng mananampalataya sa bagong tipan. Anong, panal- anong pagbabago? He was made righteous. And therefore, sabi ng talata sa Proverbs, God hears your prayer. Are you with me? Yan ang unang uh, pagbabago. Alam na alam mo na na pinakikinggan ng Diyos ang panalangin mo. Na ikaw ay ginawang righteous, ikaw ay complete in Christ, and therefore any time. You come to the throne of grace, God listens and hears you because of the finished work of Jesus Christ. Because you are made righteous, Christ paid all your sins. And for that matter, God hears your prayer. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Okay, uh, ayaw. Pangalawa, 
Second, the fact that we can pray in the name of Jesus means that we are not praying on our own merit. Here is another important uh, issue. Now, in the Old Testament, you don't pray in the name of Jesus, isn't it? Under the law, you don't pray in the name of Jesus. Only under the new covenant that we are given the privilege to use the name of Jesus in our prayer. So, but napakalaga na today under the new covenant, no, we are praying in the name of Jesus. Notice in uh, in John chapter 14, 13, 14, it says. Sabi ni Lord, and I will do whatever you ask in my name, so that the Son may bring glory to the Father. You may ask me for anything in my name, and I will do it. Can you see that? In the name of Jesus, you see, God hears our prayer. Not only that, it was Jesus' promise that He will answer our prayer. Remember, we believe in the Trinity, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, and they are one. No? So when, when, when uh, you, you use the name of Jesus under the new covenant, Jesus said, I will answer your prayer I will do it. That's why it is so important for you and I to use the name of Jesus in our prayer. To tap it all, you know, parang mm, walang iniwan yan sa uh, mag-asawa. You see, remember, the church is married to Christ. Tayo yung bride, right? So, we now, because we are married to Christ, we are given the privilege to use his name. So parang pag sa pag mag-asawa, no, you're given the privilege to use you, the name of your husband. And here, sabi ng banala kasulatan, sabi ni Lord, uh, John 14, 13 and 14, it says, I will do whatever you ask in my name. I will do whatever you ask in my name. Kaya sa lumang tipan, wala yung uh, in the name of Jesus. They do not use the name of Jesus. They don't know who Jesus is. You know? And that is why sa bak- bagong tipan, nagbago na. Sa pangalan lang ni Lord, nandun na yung power. No? And at ang may karapatan lang gumamit ng pangalan ni Lord ay yung mga uh, mananampalataya sa Kanya. So, God has given the power to use the name of Jesus for those who believe in our Lord. So today, napaka-powerful ng prayer natin. You know why? Wala ka na kailangan pang gawin kung ano-ano. Hindi ka na kailangan pang magtutumba uh, o magbababalentong o magfafasting and all that para kang pakinggan ng Diyos. I beg to disagree. You see, today, because of uh, we, are, we have given the power to use the name of Jesus, it goes without saying that Jesus Christ hears and answers your prayer. Are you with me? That's how powerful the name of Jesus is. No? Kanina, yung point natin ng verse 1, we are made righteous and God hears our prayer. Pangalawang punto natin, we are given the privilege to use the name of Jesus. Kahit saan ka nandun, you can use the name of Jesus and Jesus hears you and Jesus answers your prayer. You see, kaya nga, just, just the call of the name of Jesus immediately uh, you're out of danger, something like that, no? Merong uh, mga mananampalataya na uh, malapit ng mabundol, pero sinigaw yung Jesus. All of a sudden, biglang something happened na hindi siya nabangga because there is power sa name ni Lord. Yun yun. 
na wala yung Old Testament uh, people. Wala yung, uh, they cannot use the name of Jesus in the Old Testament. At yung mga, hin- mga hindi mananampalataya, they cannot use the name of Jesus. This name was privileged only the use of it was was given to those who believe in Jesus Christ. Amen. Pangatlo. Our attitude in prayer should not be yung attitude mo kasi kailangan yung attitude nito eh no? Hindi yung uh, nagpe-pray ka sabi mo, I pray and hope so. Sana nga at sana sagutin ni Lord yung aking panalangin. No, please. No, there is power in the name of Jesus and you are made righteous in God's sight. God hears your prayer. So don't ever say, sana pakinggan ng Diyos. No, no, no. So you, instead, you have to say, I pray and I know so because my God is a great God and He hears me and He will answer my prayer. I believe that because He said so, and He is a great God. Amen? You see, when you, when you have a great God, and you know He will do what He says, your faith simply is saying, I know because I have a great God. Hallelujah. Pangapat. Your pray, your praying hard, or the so-called praying through, kasi meron pong mga nagpapalaganap na you, para kapakinggan ng Panginoon Diyos, you have to pray hard para kapakinggan ng Panginoon. You have to, there must be a, a praying through. Again, I beg to disagree. Again, I do not believe in such a principle, praying hard or praying through. You know why? Because your praying hard and your praying through does not affect who you are praying to. You see, <laughs> hindi mo na kailangan pang impress ang Panginoong Diyos. No? Sapagkat siya mismo ang gumawa sa iyo na maging righteous ka in Christ. Siya na mismo ang gumawa sa na maging holy ka in Christ. Siya na mismo ang nagproklama that you are the righteousness of God. So, uh, meron po ba kailangan na uh, uh, praying hard? Kailangan praying hard so that God will uh, listen to you? Or kailangan pa ba yung praying through so that God will hear and answer your prayer? I beg to disagree. Yung pangalan ni Lord is enough. You know what the Lord said? In my name, I will answer your prayer. You know what God said? Because you are righteous, I will hear your prayer. That's it is all of because of Jesus. Remember this, it's all about Jesus Christ. It's not about you. Kailang idikdik mo sa iyong uh, isipan na it's not about me. It is my Lord Jesus Christ. He finished the work. He paid all my sins. And because of what He did on the cross, I stand righteous in God's sight. And therefore, He hears me when I pray. Pray. I don't have to pray hard. I don't have to pray through. The name of Jesus makes a big difference in prayer. Are you with me? Hallelujah. Glory to Jesus. You see, God is not impressed. Tandaan nyo to, no? God is not impressed with your so-called breakthrough prayer or powerful prayer. Hindi po na impress ang God, no? Hindi siya na impress sa ginagawa mo sapagkat isa lang ang uh, uh, na impress ang Diyos. God was impressed sa death ng ating Panginoong Heso Kristo. You see, He gives us the breakthrough, the name of Jesus, the offering of our Lord Jesus Christ in heaven, His blood offered in heaven gives us the breakthrough through in the very throne of God. You see that? 
You, you know what the Bible says? You can come in the throne of grace and make sure you believe and make sure something, you know, come boldly in the throne of grace because I know and I believe by the name of Jesus, by the offering of his blood in heaven, God answers all your prayer and our prayers will be heard, not only be heard, but also be answered by our Lord God. Hallelujah. Another issue is that, do you know what religion says about uh, praying to God? You know, cut yourself so that He will listen. O, oh, natatanda, siguro naman, nakikita niyo kada mahal na araw, di ba? Marami nagpipinitensya because meron siyang ipinapanalangin. Marami siyang pinipin, nagpipinitensya, pinarurusahan niya yung sarili niya, pinapalo-palo niya. Bakit? Tanungin mo, meron siyang prayer kasi yung kanyang anak may karamdaman, kailangan kong gawin to para pakinggan ako ng Diyos, para pagalingin yung anak ko, ito ko sa Diyos. Ano, mas powerful pa ba yung ginagawa mo ngayon kaysa dun sa ginawa ni Kristo Yesus sa krus ng Kalbaryo na inoffer niya ang kanyang blood, ang kanyang dugo at ang kanyang katawan upang lahat ng parusa na uukol sa atin ay kanyang binata sa krus ng Kalbaryo. Can, are you saying that you, what you're doing now, cutting yourselves or nagpipinitensya ka, nagpapapako ka sa krus or kung ano ayo pag ginagawa mo yan, Every now and then, think about it. You see, walang pinakikinggan ng Diyos, walang sinisino ang Diyos liban doon sa ginawa ng kanyang bugtong na anak sa krus ng kal- kalbaryo. He, God, our Father, was so satisfied with the finished work of our Lord Jesus Christ. The fact is anyone who believes in him shall not perish but have everlasting life and because you are now righteous proclaimed righteous in Christ God hears your prayer w- what else do you want see etong problema we lack knowledge hindi na ituturo sa atin ito yung kapangyarihan ng ginawa ni Lord sa krus ng Kalbaryo. The power of the finished work of our Lord Jesus Christ on the cross. The power of the blood. Hindi na ituro sa atin to Nakakalungkot eh. Kung ano-ano pinaggagawa natin, kabalbalan para sa, 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 sa iyong pag-iisip, ma-impress mong God so that pag na-impress mong God, sasagutin ka niya. Mali po yun. Mali. Kaya nga binigyan tayo ng pribilehyo para gamitin ang kapangyarihan ng pangalan ni Yesu Kristo. Remember what the Bible says? At the name of Jesus, every knee will bow in heaven and on earth and under the earth. Every tongue will confess that Jesus Christ is Lord for the glory of God. Lahat ay yuyuko. Tandaan mo. Ito ang kagandahan nito. Kapatid, ikaw at ako binigyan tayo ng pribilehyo para gamitin ang power ng pangalan ng ating Panginoong Heso Kristo. Sapat na yon. Ang demonyo, ang si Satanas, yuyuko sa pangalan ni Jesus. Sabi nga ni Lord, If you have faith, In Him, as small as a mustard seed, pwede mong sabihin sa bundok na ito, lumipat ka sa gitna ng dagat and it will obey you. So that's practically showing that uh, there is power in the name of Jesus. Anong required sa atin? Believe. 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 Believe in Christ. He did it all for you and me. Ginawa niya ang lahat para sa iyo at sa akin, para sa ating lahat. You know, kaya nga po, kuminsan, uh, napupulaan ako dun sa personal slogan ko, it's all about Jesus. But some people do not realize that it's truly 
it's all about Jesus. Not about you. Not about you. Not about your sacrifice. Not about your uh, penitence. Not about what you're doing. But Jesus did it all for you and I. All you have to do is to fix your eyes on Jesus, who is the author and the finisher of our faith. Are you with me? Are you with me? Glory to God. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Subunod, people think that God must be persuaded. You know, the fact na kung ano-ano pinagagawa natin, akala natin, pwede nating uh, ano ba ito? Sulsulan, o pwede nating uh, what's the term in Tagalog? Uh, pwede nating uh, <laughs> alam mo yung Apple pa- Palace or what? Uh, pwede nating uh, ah, nawawala ako. You know, pwede nating uh, Anong tawag na uh, pag binobo? <laughs> Pangit naman yung bola, eh, no? Na, uh, pag sinabi mo, pwede ba natin bolahin ng Panginoon? O pwede ba natin uh, <laughs> gumawa ng mga bagay-bagay para siya ma-impress, para niya tayo uh, tugunin sa ating mga panalangin? I don't think so. I don't think so. Isa lang bagay na ka-impress sa ating Panginoong Diyos ang finished work ng ating Panginoong Heso Kristo. So people think that Uh, God must be persuaded while in fact God is more than willing to give us all things. Do you know because of what Jesus did on the cross, God is more than willing to give us all things? Hallelujah. You know, yan lang ang problema. Hindi natin, ang problema nito hindi natin alam. Look at Matthew 6, 7. It says, And when you pray, no, Use not vain repeated, repetition, repetition like pagans na paulit-ulit na panalangin. For they think they will be heard because of their many words. Do not be like them. For your Father knows what you need before you ask Him. Can you see that? Alam ng Panginoong Diyos kung ano ang kailangan mo bago pa hingin mo ito. No? You see that? Kaya di mo pwedeng bulahin si Lord. Di mo pwedeng, huwag na yun. Talisin mo na yun. Kito yung mga nakaugalian natin dahilan sa maling aral na ating kinalakihan. You know? Bumalik tayo sa katotohanan na kasulat, sa banal na kasulatan. The Father knows all you need. You don't have to pray using high-sounding words for God to be uh, impressed and for you to be heard by God. No more. Kalimutan mo In fact, they say, uh, just the mere mention of our Lord, the name of Jesus, things can change. You know, you see, you you are not persuading God. God has already been persuaded by the work of our Lord Jesus Christ. In fact, sabi sa Romans chapter eight thirty two, no. He who did not spare his own son, but gave him up for us all. How will he not also, along with him, graciously give us all things? Can you see that? Kung naibigay niya ang pinakaimportante sa kanya, which is ang kanyang bugtong na anak, hindi kaya ibigay niya na lahat, graciously give us all things? Can you see that idea? Kung naibigay niya na the most important thing sa kanya, sa kanyang mata, sa kanyang harapan, which is the Lord Jesus Christ, will He not also give us graciously all things? Imagine mo dyan. 
Naibigay niya na lahat. Ano pa ba? Meron pa ba mas mahalaga sa bugtong na kanyang bugtong na anak na ibinigay niya sa krus ng Kalbaryo para ang kasalanan mo at kasalanan ko ay mapatawad niya? Amen. It is not as if your prayer makes God becomes good. Tandaan niyo ito. Sometimes we pray na uh, sinasamahan natin ng mga gawa para ang Diyos kasi medyo mas, medyo hindi impress. Ini-impress natin ng Diyos. Sinasamahan natin ng mga gawa, gawa ng tao thinking that we can make God good. No? Ay, pag ginawa ko to God will be good to me. Ay, pag ito ginawa ko, alam mo, magiging mabuti ang Diyos sa akin. You know, ang totoo niyan, you need to persuade your heart. You know, sa lahat ng ating mga nat- na- natukoy na, you see, God is more than persuaded. God is more than willing. God wants to bless you through Christ Jesus so that His Son will be glorified because it was His Son who did everything for you and I. The Son followed, obeyed our Father in everything. That is why anyone who believes in Him shall not perish but have everlasting life. Brethren, persuade your heart, not God. You don't have to persuade God. If you're a Christian, persuade your heart. God hears you. God listens to you. God will answer your prayer by faith. You see, He will. That is why, what is the number one admonitions for admonition for a Christian? Fix your eyes on Jesus, the author and the perfecter of our faith. Can you see that? Fix your eyes on Jesus. Wag, wag nating, kasi although uh, si Peter, nung sinabi niya, Lord, nung nakita niya si Lord, naglalakad sa tubig, no? Ating gabi, naglalakad sa tubig, kala nila uh, multo, aswang or something like that, no? Pero nakita nila, sabi ni Lord, it is I. And then, alam mo na, si Peter, no? parating uh, presentable, sabi niya, kung ikaw nga ay si Jesus, sabi niya, utusan mo ko na lumakad papunta sa iyo. You know what the Lord said? The Lord said, come. Isang salita lang. So, itong Peter, no, kitang-kita, uh, imaginein mo, no, si Peter, yung unang yapak sa tubig, unang hakbang na tapak mo sa tubig, you know, you have to have a strong faith in order for you na tapakan mo yung tubig at lahat ng weight mo ay uh, kargahin ng tubig, eh, alam mo naman, yung tubig lulubog ka ron. Pero ano nangyari? Nakatindig ang Peter. No? Isang hakbang, wow! Dalawang hakbang, wow! Tatlong hakbang, yes! Ngunit ang problema ito eh, no? Nung nakita niya yung malaking alon at yung naramdaman niya yung hangin na malakas, naalis yung tingin niya kay Jesus na patingin siya dun sa malakas na alon at yung uh, ihip ng hangin na kanyang nararamdaman. Ano nangyari? He started sinking. And then, you know what he said? Lord, help. And immediately, the Lord helped him na makalakad papunta hanggang doon sa bangka. Anong lesson? Yun yung sinabi ko kanina. Fix your eyes on Jesus. He is the author and He is the perfecter of our faith. Fix your eyes on Jesus. Are you with me? Repeat after me. Fix your eyes on Jesus, the author and the perfecter of our faith. Huwag mong aalisin doon. Siya ang iyong panampalatayaan. Siya ang iyong paniwalaan 
and you will never, never regret it. After all, walang nagmamahal sa atin liban sa Kanya. Hallelujah. Persuade your heart. Ika nga di sa aking punto. Persuade your heart. Now, remember, Jesus never condemns short prayer. Here's another point, no? Hindi naman kinokondem ni Lord yung short prayer. Look at John 11:41-42. So they they took away uh, they took away the stone. Then Jesus looked up and said, "Father, I thank you that you have heard me. I knew that you always hear me, but I said this for the benefit of the people standing here, that they may believe that you sent me. You see? Ipinakita ng Panginoon kung papaano manalangin para sa benepisyo ng mga taong nakapaligid sa Kanya. You see, remember, sabi dun sa ano, huwag kayo manalangin ng paulit-ulit. Alam na ng Diyos kung ano hinihiling ninyo bago pa ninyo hilingin, bago pa ninyo sabihin sa Kanya. Alam niya na eh. Hindi mo kailangan gumamit ng high-sounding words, no? Mga... Uh, high faluting word na mga hindi mo na malaman kung ano no usually tinat nilalaki ang pa yung bosses our father father blah 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 come on hindi sa impress ayo impress ya kay Lord Jesus ngayon ang idea now maniwala ka kay Lord maniwala ka sa just na buhay then kung ano man ang panalangin mo The Lord said, He will give it to you. Are you with me? Now, that is why, ito yung aking dinidiscuss na malaking kaibahan sa Old Testament panalangin at huwag natin gawin yung sa Old Testament panalangin sapagkat they are not in Christ. Iba yung sa New Covenant na panalangin because we are in Christ and we have the power to use the name of Jesus and we are made complete in Christ and we are made holy. Malaki po ang kaibahan ng power ng name ni Lord Jesus Christ. At ang sumunod po, some teachings on prayer refer to, ito yung sinasabi ko, ano, refer to the prayer of Daniel in the Old Testament forgetting that Jesus did not die yet. No? Yung ang problema kasi maraming mga nagtuturo no kailangan sundin natin yung makipag-battle tayo in in the heavenlies because yung sagot sa panalangin natin ay uh, hina hinahatlangan ng satanas ang kanyang mga kampon gaya nung panalangin ni Daniel nung lumang tipan but i beg to disagree no hindi pa namamatay si Lord noon wala pa si Jesus noon hindi pa siya namamatay hindi pa siya nagkakatatawang tao noon. Kaya yung yung prayer para ma, para yung sagot sa prayer para maidala kay Daniel, the, the angels have to uh, fight the enemy in, in the, the heavenlies. Para lang maidala yung sagot. Pero today, remember, sabi ng Biblia, Colossians 2:15 And having disarmed the powers and authorities, he made a public spectacle of them, triumphing over them by the cross. Sa so, makatwid baga, sa krus ng Kalbaryo, na-disarmahan na ang mga demonyo at kanyang kampon. No? Na-disarmahan na noong si Lord ay namatay sa krus ng Kalbaryo. So they are defeated. Christ defeated them and disarmed them already sa by the cross. Tandaan po ninyan. Hindi, to top it all, anong sabi ng Biblia? The Holy Spirit dwells in us. 
No, the Holy Spirit is dwelling in our hearts, signifying that you and I belongs to God. No, wala sila noon. No? Wag mong, wag mong uh, itulad yung panalangin today na kailangan ka pa makapagdigmaan sa mga, sa mga kampun ni Satanas para lang uh, yung sagot ng Diyos ay maipadala sa iyo. I beg to disagree. Hindi po totoo yan under the new covenant. You have a powerful prayer under the new covenant. You have given the privilege to use the name of Jesus, the power of the name of Jesus. That is why uh, isa sa mga sinulat ko noon sa aking uh, Facebook na there is no power in prayer, but the power lies in the power of the name of Jesus. That is why, mag-pray ka. You're not using the name of Jesus, God will, God will not hear you. But if you, uh, if you use the name of Jesus, God is obligated to hear you because of the finished work of Jesus Christ. Because you believe in uh, the finished work of His Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. So, tandaan ninyo to. No, the enemy has been defeated on the cross. Wala nang disarmahan na ang enemy as far as Christian is concerned. No, wala na siyang uh, hawak sa iyo. So, walang uh, uh, sandata na maaring uh, makapanaig sa atin because of our Lord Jesus Christ. Gayun din, When you declare by faith based on the word of God and knowing your rights and privileges because of what Jesus Christ has accomplished for you, that is a powerful prayer. That is why it's so important knowledge to know what the Bible says, to know what Jesus accomplished for you, to know what the power what the, the power behind you, the power behind the name of Jesus Christ. See, kailangan malaman mo to, eh, no? Through the Word of God, kailangan malaman mo yung rights and privileges because you are in Christ. Or you have to know what Christ accomplished for you so that your faith will increase. And kaya na sabi ko nina, Fix your eyes on Jesus, the author. Remember that He is the author of your faith and the perfecter of your faith. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Kaya iwasan na natin yan. No? Iwasan po natin yung uh, uh, kung saan-saan natin binabase ang ating panalangin. No? na keso kailangan kong gawin ito, kailangan kong mag-pray ng, ah, kailangan kong mag-pray ng sampu nito, dalawampu nito, isang daan nito, pag natapos ko ito, ano man ang hilingin ko, ay bibigay sa akin ng Panginoong Diyos. Hello? It is only through the finished work of Jesus that God hears your prayer because under the new covenant, You are made complete, you are made righteous, you are made holy, and He hears your prayer. Another thing, place, place is not an issue in prayer under grace. Tandaan nyo, place is not an issue in prayer under grace. Now, you don't have to... Uh, kailangan pumunta ako sa place na ito. I'm sorry. Okay. No, ah, kailangan nandito ako sa place na ito. Kailangan mabisita ko itong place na ito. Para, you see, dito, pagka dito ko nalangin, sasagutin ni Lord. You know? Pag nagpunta ka sa, sa place na ito, tiyak na tiyak. Your ans- you will ha- receive an answered prayer. Hello? Wala po sa place ang answered prayer, hindi na hindi po kinikilala ni Lord 
sa bagong tipan na kailangan nandito ka sa place na to bago niya pakinggan ang iyong daing o ang iyong panalangin. Look at what the Bible says in Romans chapter 5 verse 1 and 2. Remember this? Therefore, since we have just been justified by faith, no? We have peace with God. Remember that. We have peace with God. We're justified by faith. We're proclaimed righteous. Uh, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we gain access by faith into this grace in which we stand now. And we rejoice in the hope of the glory of God. Di ba madalas niyo ako mapakinggan na sinasabi ko sa inyo, mga kapatid, na under grace, under the new covenant of grace, you're standing on grace ground and it is accessible by faith? Wala po sa lugar. Wala sa lugar. It is uh, by faith. Tayo ngayon eh, sa... We, we live in, in a new living way by the Spirit. It's not in a place. Ay, kailangan pumunta ako sa lugar na to, banal tong lugar na to. Pag dito ako nalalangin, pakikinggan ng Diyos. Hello? Ang sabi ng Diyos, remember ang sabi ng Diyos, I will bless you in the city, I will bless you in the country. Kahit saan ka pumunta, I will bless you. Why? Because we Christians are standing on grace ground. Kahit saan tayo pumunta, we're standing on grace ground. And it is accessible by faith. We can access it by faith. No? Hindi ba lugar? Ah, kailangan pumunta sa, sa lugar na to kasi dito lang sinasagot ni Lord ang tugon, no? Dito lang niya binibigay ang tugon sa panalangin ko. Ah, kailangan akong pumunta ng uh, anong tawag dito? Sa Ubando. Kailangan magsayaw-sayaw ko para magkaroon ako. Na, Hello? Well, kung magsasayaw ka man doon, magbigay ka man na itlog, whatever uh, that is, no? I'm not so sure kung ano yun. Hindi ko masyado alam yung idea na yun. Pero alam ko, sasayaw ka doon, dadala ka itlog, whatever, you know. Then, uh, sasagutin ka raw ng uh, kung sino man yung santoron. O, hello, pwede ba? Ibalik natin ang tuon kay Jesus Christ. He died for you and I. Siya yung, uh, it's all about Him, not about you. Hindi doon sa ginagawa mo. Walang kwenta yung ginagawa mo. No, sa kanyang harapan para kasagutin. Ang importante ay ang pananampalataya mo sa kanya na siya ang gumawa ng lahat para sa iyo. And uh, remember, prayer without, we are commanded to pray without ceasing. Just uh, remember, praying without ceasing is a lifestyle of gratitude. Walang sinisinong lugar to. You know, that is why in Hebrews chapter 13 verse 15, it says, Through Jesus, therefore, let us continually offer to God a sacrifice of praise, the fruit of lips that confess His name. Fruit of lips that confess His name. So that prayer, praising, Praising and thanking God becomes a lifestyle of gratitude for you and I, Christians. It's a prayer, a lifestyle of gra- a lifestyle, no, of gratitude. Sa ating pangyayong Dios. Remember also that under the new covenant of grace, we also have a powerful prayer warrior. Ito, you know, I, I think I've discussed this uh, so several months, several weeks ago, that one of the privilege we do, privileges we have, is that we have a powerful prayer warrior. No? 
Yung mga, mga member dyan ng prayer warrior. Even if you do not pray for me, and I know naman, mga kapatiran, you're praying for me. Sinasama niyo ako sa prayer. Kasi uh, there was this uh, mangyans na hindi ko malimutan yung gawain at sa Mindoro. Mindoro. Eh, lumapit siya sa akin. Alam mo, Pastor, araw, gabi-gabi po, pinapanalangin ko kayo. Wow! Sabi ko, purihin ng Panginoong Diyos. Merong nananalangin sa akin gabi-gabi. Mangyan to, ah. Mangyan sa kapatid na mangyan. Mananampalataya kay Kristo Jesus. But, bukod dyan, ito yung pinaka-importante. Remember what Romans chapter 8.27 says, And he who searches our hearts knows the mind of the Spirit because the Spirit intercedes for the saints in accordance with God's will. Kaya po, napakaganda nito. So, it's so uplifting na, you know, when I have so much problem that I can, I, 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 I don't know what to pray, the Holy Spirit takes over and He intercedes for me in accordance with God's will. Can you see that? Do you know that? Do you believe that? That you have a prayer warrior who intercedes for you in accordance with God's will? Oh, that is the new covenant for you. Walang kulang, eh, di ba? Ginawa kang righteous, ginawa kang complete, no? Binigay sa iyo yung pangalan ng Panginoong Heso Kristo para gamitin mo. Anytime you use the name of Jesus, God hears you, the Lord will answer you, and He will protect you. Just the name of Jesus, the Lord will protect you. Just, just the name, the mention of the name of Jesus, the power from heaven, you know, Uh, helps you if you're in need. And here, if you don't know how to pray because of so much burden, because of so much pain, do you know that the Bible says the Holy Spirit intercedes, intercedes for you and I according to God's will. See, kung ano kalagayan natin kay Lord? Because of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior? Hallelujah. Glory to God. As a reminder, please, don't live a life as if the cross doesn't matter. Please. Don't live a life as if the cross doesn't matter. It's all about Jesus. It's not about you. It's about Him. Lord Jesus, thank you for the reminders. Even in our prayer, It is so important for us to understand and know that by His blood we are made righteous. By the finished work of Jesus Christ, by your finished work, we are made holy and we are given access to the very throne of God by the power of your name. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. We give you praise. We give you glory. We give you honor. Thank you for all those blessings you have given us. We glorify your name. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Hallelujah. We're having uh, communion, no? so ihanda po ninyo yung inyong mga 
uh, emblems na gagamitin para po sa ating communion. Okay po, kung naibigyan na ninyo lahat, let us pray. Dakilang Diyos, maraming salamat po sa tinapay, simbolo ng katawan ng aming Panginoong Heso Kristo na doon sa krus ng Kalbaryo ay nagtamo ng maraming sugat, maraming latay at ang sabi ng banalakasulatan, dahilan sa, sa stripes or wound that uh, natinanggap ng Panginoon, we are healed. And I know, we believe, Lord, that this is not only spiritual, pero naniniwala kami by faith na ito rin ay maaaring ipataw sa amin ang kagalingan ng aming katawan kung meron kaming karamdaman. Ama, pakabanalin mo po ang tinapay, simbolo ng, aming, simbolo ng katawan ng aming Panginoong Heso Kristo. Salamat po, Panginoon. Purihin ka sa pangalan ni Jesus. Amen and Amen. Sabay-sabay po natin kainin ang tinapay. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. We give you praise. We give you honor. Glory to your name. Narito naman ang katas ng ubas. Sabi mo, This is the fruit of the vine. This is the blood of the new covenant. Thank you, Lord, for the new covenant. Thank you, Lord that we are under the new covenant because of your shed blood on Calvary's cross. And because of your blood, we are cleansed from all sins. Father, sanctify these emblems, the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, that it may be right for this very purpose. We give you praise, we give you honor, In Jesus' name, Amen and Amen. Sabay-sabay po natin inumin ang katas ng ubas. Hallelujah. Praise you, Jesus. Tayo po'y magsambit ng kanya-kanyang pasalamat kay Lord. Lord, patuloy ka namin pinasasalamatan. Patuloy ka namin pinupuri. Napakabuti mo po sa amin. Dahilan sa iyong sakripisyo sa krus ng Kalbaryo, kami ngayon nagtatamasan ng kapatawaran. Kami ngayon ay kabahagi na ng pamilya ng Diyos. Kami ngayon ay malinis sa harapan ng Ama. Walang bahid dungis dahilan sa power ng sakripisyo ng iyong dugo sa krus ng Kalbaryo. Salamat din sa iyong katawan na nagtamo ng maraming pasa upang kami magkaroon ng kagalingan, hindi lamang spiritual, maging physical. Hallelujah. Purihin ka. Purihin ka. Dakilang Diyos, wala kang kapantay. Wala kang katulad. Nag-iisang Diyos, tunay na nagmamahal sa aming lahat. Sa iyo lamang ang papuri. Sa iyo lamang ang parangal. Amen and amen. Tayong lahat po ay tumayo and I will give the uh, benediction. And now, may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God the Father, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forevermore. Lahat po magsabi ng Amen. Amen and Amen. Thank you. At uh, muli po tayong magninig, Lord willing, sa Sunday. No? At uh, tandaan po ninyo, it's all about Jesus.
It's all about Jesus. God is so, so good. Amen and amen. Thank you.